What's going on you guys? This is Sean here with Venture Art House and today we're just going to do a little bit of a cinematography breakdown. Uh, so recently in some Fuji forums on Facebook I posted some stills from a new music video I just shot the other night and got a lot of great feedback. A lot of people wanted me to make this video so I appreciate you guys and all the kind comments. Um, so this music video is for an artist named Fredo here in Los Angeles. I shot this with my X-T3 alone and uh, honestly I'm not trying to toot my own horn but I'm really happy with the look that we were able to dial in. So so let's get into that right now. All right, so coming here, uh, we're going to take a look at this first uh, frame and how we shot everything. A lot of the camera settings were very consistent uh, throughout each of these different looks that I'm going to go through um, with maybe the difference of like white balancing. So first, let's go over camera settings. Uh, this was shot in 4K uh, DCI. Um, that just gives me a wider aspect ratio and more pixels. So it just gives me a little bit more to work with. I shot 200 megabits in long op. And uh, actually, that just is more than enough data. Um, I wasn't sure if, if I was going to have enough time to dump all the footage I was shooting and everything. So we shot a little bit more compressed uh, just to save data. And even then, 200 megs in 4K is more than enough. It's already more than the Sonys. You Fuji guys know what I mean. <laughs> um, so the next thing is going to be that we shot this in 23.976. Uh, frames per second, you know, that slow cinema look. And of course, our shutter was 148th. And then the next thing on here is going to be that we shot this in F log. Now, I like to shoot F log uh, because number one, you're going to get the most dynamic range out of the camera. You're going to get the cleanest um, image possible because you can really push and uh, play with the file. There's a lot more latitude in it rather than like a color baked film simulation in Rec. 709. Uh, Eterna is cool, but even then, I just, uh, I've gotten so used to the Eterna process that, uh, sorry, the F log process that's pretty much all I shoot exclusively these days. Um, so the next thing with my F log is, is that um, I'm always using false color to monitor my exposure, make sure everything is great. I wouldn't so much trust the uh, exposure meter at the bottom of the camera that says like plus one, negative two, you know, stuff like that, because that meter is measuring the entire scene. It's not just measuring where you want it to. So I would definitely uh, recommend using a, uh, an external monitor to be able to have one of these features and monitor correctly. So I was using my fault color. And then also I have uh, a custom Arri Alexa 709 LUT that I use on top of my F-Log footage to monitor. Uh, I use a small HD monitor. I don't rec any recommend any other monitor company but them at this point. Uh, this was recorded also on SD cards, not with an Atomos. Stay the hell away from that thing. I still have to make a video about it. You'll get the best footage possible out of the internal SD cards when shooting on Fuji. So uh, that's pretty much it for my camera settings right now. Um, the next thing that, well, probably the last thing on the camera settings is that we white balance this at 4,000 Kelvin. And actually our key light right over here, which is blasting through, is an RE Sky Panel S60. And we had that balanced out to 3200 Kelvin. So 3200 is about tungsten right there. And the reason I dialed it to that is because number one, tungsten is going to give you the most accurate skin tones possible versus daylight. And number two, it's kind of more the look that I was going for. Um, so when I balance the camera to 4000 Kelvin with a 3200 Kelvin light, it's giving us this more warm, uh, golden, orangish look, if you will. And the green is actually really not done in post. I push just the green tint in camera. Uh, and you can do that in your white balance setting. So that's pretty much everything that we were rocking for white balance. So the sky panel right over here, getting back to our lighting, is punching in. And it's just giving us this nice uh, key, like this edge right over here on him. And it's just falling off on his face, like really nicely. I had it at full output, like right over here through the window. Um, and then on the other side, I had a big, massive white side of a five-in-one reflector. So the light came in, it bounced 
off of this whiteboard and then right back into his face and what that's doing is just like right over here in these dark shadow areas it just softens everything up and if you can even see there's like a little bit of a catch in his eyes from my five and one this way everything doesn't just fall off into into black so it just cleans up my shadows a little bit and uh just helps it like grade eight a little bit smoother without being so so dark and dramatic and that's pretty much it for the lighting um, the last thing that I did is we just added haze inside of here and the haze really helps to just carry the light uh, over it softens up the image a little bit and it's just going to give you a much more overall filmic look um, the thing I'd recommend when using haze is try not to overdo it if you do I've made this mistake before you're going to get a very chalky chalky look and your image gets soft and it just doesn't look so good so be sparing with it uh, try and thin it out as much as possible if you don't own a hazer and you're trying to do something on the cheap with smaller rooms uh, go on Amazon and pick up a uh, pick up a fogger you can get one for like 30 bucks pick up some liquid on there um, it'll give you similar results but you want to take like your 5-in-1 or like a piece of cardboard and waft out the uh, fog so it's like real real thin wait a little bit and once it's nice and thin you're gonna get great great results with it uh, and the last thing is check your uh, check your smoke alarms in the room. Make sure you've disabled all of them, unplug them, and then for extra safety, just put over like a like a plastic shopping bag, and that'll make sure that it won't go off. Because uh, I've been there, and it's awkward, and you don't want the fire department showing up. Uh, so that's it for this frame. Uh, and the last thing I almost forgot is that we were running a one uh, fourth, uh, sorry, one eighth uh, black pro mist on here and that just softened things up just a little bit more um and gave us the overall look now because i was also using this um this sky panel I had great output um as soft as the uh, pro mist is and it kind of just gets things up i also want sharpness at the same time i know it's weird it's, it sounds like a balance but you can see pretty much almost every detail on his pore like on his skin uh, without being overly sharp now this was shot at about t6 on uh, rokinon 35 millimeter and shooting at like that kind of uh, t-stop is going to give us just a much more crisp image overall much more professional image and even then, look guys, I'm still getting depth of field, so I'd recommend staying away from like apertures like 1.4 and stuff like that. Uh, when you shoot at higher T-stops like this with you know a tighter focal length, you're still gonna get that depth of field, you're still gonna get some compression, but you're just gonna get an overall sharper, more clean image. Um, and I pretty much used uh, my light meter uh, most of the time, not the one on my camera, I have a Sekonic, uh to ensure that I was getting the proper t stop that I was trying to shoot at uh, so that's it for this look uh, hope that helped uh, let's go on to the next one over here all right so this one's actually going to be the opener for the video and uh, same thing this was uh, pretty much shot all the camera settings were exactly the same uh, although our light is a little bit different so right over here we had a C stand and that's actually a piece of cloth covering the bottom of it so you couldn't see it. C-stand, and then we had the arm coming over uh, with an aperture light dome right over here, bringing this nice light right down onto him. Um, and this was in an aperture 120D Mark II. Now, what's a little bit different here is the 120D does not do tungsten. It is only a daylight 5600 Kelvin balanced light, or I think it's actually 6000, I forget, but you get the point. Um, so it only does that, but I wanted tungsten. So what I did is I used a CTB in there, and the light dome too actually has a nice gel holder. So I took a CTB, uh, sorry, what am I saying here? I took a CTO, you're losing it here, Sean. I took a CTO, which stands for color temperature orange, and I put it inside the gel holder here, and that basically takes our daylight uh, balance aperture 120D and makes it into a tungsten. And that's gonna give me my better skin tones, it's gonna give me more of the warm look that I want. And same thing, we went 4000 Kelvin inside the camera on this one. I think I went for like just a minus two on like the green tint, just like pushing over to the left. You'll see it in like your uh, in your white balance settings. And that's pretty much it. We use the haze too. 
all of the camera settings were the same uh, and then I think this was shot at about t6 too I mean I pretty much try and stay at like a 4 to a 6 um, most of the time and this was shot at 35 millimeter on Roken on uh, cine lenses and same thing uh, 1 8 black pearl mist and uh, that's pretty much it and then um, yeah yeah, I can't really say anything else about this frame. Just super, super simple. Oh, and uh, the last thing is I put uh, the grid on the 120D. And what that does is that just focuses all the light right around this area. So it doesn't spill everywhere and on the, the walls. And it just brings things in more. That's it. Very, very simple lighting setup. Very simple in camera. F-log, same old thing as the last one. Now, the last uh, frame right over here, the last look that I have, is uh, in the same spot. So now what we did here is um, same exact lighting setup, same exact everything. Uh, but this is shot on an 85 millimeter Rokinon. Still running the 1 8 on the Pro Mist. And then still running the 120D right overhead. Uh, but what's different here is in this 120D, uh, this time instead of the CTO, we ran with two stacked uh, CTBs, which stands for color temperature blue. And on a daylight balance light, that's kind of just going to give me way more of a blue look. Uh, and then what I did is I actually balanced the camera out at 3000 Kelvin. And that really, really cooled things down to give me this blue look pretty much right in camera. Um, and, and that's it. And then right over here, just to fill in his face on the close-ups, I like to pretty them up just a little bit. I had uh, a five in one reflector just bounce a little bit light, just the white side right over here, just how I did before. And that just softened up the shadows. And pretty much what you're seeing is, uh, what I got out of the camera when I was monitoring on the LUT and same thing. I wanted it nice and crispy. If you can see the details in the and the uh, lips and everything on the face. Um, I believe that this was somewhere either around a four or a five, six, um, if I'm remembering correctly. But yeah, I got it nice and crisp the way I like it. And still the Pearl Mist helped to take off that edge so it's not too digitally sharp, but is at the same time. It's a, it's a nice ground, <laughs> if you will. It's a nice middle ground. Uh, so that's it pretty much for how I shot this uh, with my camera. hope you guys can uh, do something similar and get similar results. I hope this helped you out. Uh, we'll be talking about the post-production on this video soon. This hasn't come out yet. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, let me know what you think.